Hello, in this video, we continue to learn how to manage our money. Following lessons in this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, and this video number 24. Join me. Hello, welcome to Take a Step to a Better You. On this channel, I share what I know and continue to learn. And this, uh, my videos are about YouTube tips, business tips, earning money online tips through affiliate marketing. I also record videos just to motivate you, asking you to take a step to make your life better. And that could be on any topic and it's for everyone. And recently I also introduced, money, uh, talk about books, great books. We are reviewing in this video, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. We are learning how to manage our money better. And then this is video number 24. So if that sounds like a good message I have here, please consider subscribing. And after subscribing, please click on the bell so you get notified when I have new videos. I'm going to explain my schedule at the end of this lesson and also explain how you could get this book audio free for one month and also the physical copy. But for now, let's first, but uh, actually immediately I like to mention that because this is video 24, video number one up to 23, the ones we finished, they are in the, the, there's a link in the pinned comment. Uh, please find it, uh, hopefully after watching this one. You can go back and watch all the way from number one to 23. It's a pinned comment, the link. And I call it, if you just go to the playlist, the, I call it Lessons from Robert Kiyosaki. That's the one that has all the videos. But for those of you who have been here with me, Thank you so much. I appreciate you very much. And always, please, all of you, please always leave a comment. And I would appreciate if the comment is about what you just had. I appreciate being saying good video, great video, yes. But what did you take away? That shows that at least you, you remembered something that I talked about. And that we, this is beneficial. Okay, thank you very much. And I'm hoping you already subscribed and you share these videos. We want to grow this community. Now, before I continue, I have to explain who Robert Kiyosaki is. I say this all the time because some people are just seeing me for the first time. And please bear with me if you've been here every day because I have to explain. Robert Kiyosaki is a self made millionaire, entrepreneur, educator, and investor. When you see me reading, it means it came from the book. He had a mission to elevate the financial well-being of humanity, starting with one life and one person at a time. And I always add that person could be you. So he named the book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, because of what he called two dads. One was his real dad, and that, that's the one he calls his poor dad. He wasn't actually really poor, but he calls it poor because he was a highly educated man with a PhD and he was, he had, uh, he was a superintendent of education. But then the rich dad was his friend, Michael's dad. And he had left school at age 13, eighth grade, and he ended up being one of the wealthiest men in, in Hawaii. That's why we are learning all these lessons. He learned the lessons and put them in the book. All right, I go back to remind you what we did, chapter 23. Still the same lesson in 2020. Video 20, 23, sorry. Video 23 was still about lesson two, chapter two, which was, or it still is, why teach financial literacy? My intention in this video is to finish this lesson of uh, why teach financial literacy because I want to start a new lesson, which is going to be in video 25 mind your own business. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I feel it's going to be a little bit longer because I, I, I couldn't fit in two videos, so I decided to finish it. Let's finish this one. We ended video 23 here. Just a reminder, just a reminder where we ended so we can then move forward. In video 23, Robert was saying that my educated dad my educated dad, remember when he said educated dad, that's his real father. 
My educated dad's personal financial statement best demonstrates he had some diagrams here, but I said we can follow without the diagrams really. Uh, the statement, financial statements demonstrates the life of someone caught in the right race. His expenses match his income, never allowing him enough left over to invest in assets. That means his dad, although he was an intended man, the amount he was making is almost the same as what he spent. So nothing left. And then as a result, his liabilities uh, were larger than his assets. But as for his rich dad, uh, his personal financial statement reflects the results of a life dedicated to investing and minimizing liabilities. That should be our goal. To try to invest. In fact, today's lesson is going to show you a little bit of how you could do that. Okay, now I'm starting video 24. Officially, this is where we started. That's something new. I was just reviewing what we did in 23. So, why the rich get richer? It's like a subtitle. A review of my rich daddy's financial statement showed why the rich get richer. The asset column generates more than enough income to cover expenses. We, with the balance, reinvested into the asset column. The asset column continues to grow and therefore the income it produces grows with it. The reason is that the rich get richer. And why the middle class struggle? That's a, a sub, small subtitle. The middle class find itself in a constant state of financial struggle. Their primary income is through their salary. As their wages increase, so do the taxes. Uh, their expenses to tend to increase in proportion to their salary increase, hence the phrase, the right race. They treat their home as their primary asset instead of investing in income producing assets. I'm going to skip a little bit, you know, I skip a little when I, I feel like it's not adding much. And skip. Okay, before I skip, I think let me read this, this paragraph. The, this pattern of treating your home as an investment and the philosophy that a pay raise means you can buy a larger home or spend more is the foundation of today's debt-ridden society. Increased spending throws families into greater debt and into more financial uncertainty, even though they may be advancing their jobs and receiving pay raises. This is high-risk living caused by weak financial education. That's when I will skip and then go uh, next year saying, the real tragedy is that the lack of early financial education is what creates the risk faced by average middle-class people. The reason they have to play it safe is because their financial positions are tenuous at best. Their balance sheets are not balanced. Instead, they are loaded with liabilities and have no real assets that generate income. Typically, their only source of income is their paycheck. Their livelihood becomes entirely dependent on their employer. So when genuine bills of a lifetime come along, uh, these people can't take advantage of them because they are working so hard, attached to the marks, and are loaded with debt. As I said at the, this is Robert continuing. As I said at the start of this section, the most important rule is to, to know the difference between an asset and a liability. Uh, I hope now that one, we all know now the, the difference between an asset and a liability. An asset, uh, bring, this is me now talking. Asset, bring money in your pocket. Liability, takes money out of your pocket. That's a simple formula. Okay, once you understand the difference, concentrate your efforts on buying income generating assets. That's the best way to get started on a path to becoming rich. Keep doing that and your asset column will grow. Keep liabilities and expenses down so more money is available to continue powering into the asset column. Soon the asset base will be so deep that you can afford to look at more expectative investments. Investments that may be they may have returned over 100% to infinity. For example, 5,000 investments, $5,000 investments that are soon uh, could turn into 1 million. 
or dollars or more. Investment that the middle class calls too risky. The investment is not risky for the financially literate. Uh, now, as an employee who is also a homeowner, your working efforts are as follows. He's showing, like, if you have a job and you have you own a home, this is, he explained that three, uh, you are actually working for these three. Number one, you work for your company. Employees make their business owner or their shareholders rich, not themselves. Your efforts and success will help provide for the owner's success and retirement. Then the other pass, the other two, uh, the second one is your, your, you work for the government. The first time you work for your employer, the next one you work for your, for the government because the government takes its share from your paycheck before you even see it. By working harder, you simply increase the amount of taxes taken by the government. Most people work from January to May just for the government. Then number three, you work for the bank. After taxes, your next largest expense is usually your mortgage and credit card debt. So you are working just to pay those three and then the money is gone. So this, the problem with simply working harder is that each of these three levels takes greater share of your increased efforts. You need to learn how to have your increased effort benefit you and your family directly. Once you have decided to concentrate on mining your own business, focus your offers efforts on acquiring assets instead of a bigger paycheck, how you set how how do you set your goals? Most people must keep their job and rely on rely on their wages to fund the acquisition of assets. As their assets grow, how do they measure the extent of their success? When does someone know that they are rich, that they have wealth? He's asking this question, but he's about to answer them. Uh, he says, in fact, he's quoting someone, but I'm going to skip that. But he, he's had this. Wealth is a person's ability to survive so many number of days forward. Or if, uh, for example, he's saying, if I stopped working today, how long could I survive? That that's how you measure wealth. And he says, unlike net worth, which is the difference between your assets and liabilities, and often filled with the person's expensive junk and poor opinions of that of what he thinks are worth, this definition creates the possibility for developing a truly accurate measurement. I could now measure. And I know where I was in terms of my goal to become financially independent. Although it was often includes cash, non-cash producing assets like stuff you bought that now sits in your garage, wealth measures how much money your money is making and therefore your financial survivability. Wealth is the measure of the cash flow from the asset column compared with the expense column. He has an example here. He said, let's say you have uh, from your asset, you got like a thousand dollars a month and your expenses are like two thousand dollars a month. According to this definition, uh, I assume you have a 30 day month. You have enough, enough money, enough cash flow to take you half a month because you got a thousand from your assets and your expenses are two thousand. In fact, I, I was planning to say something about that, but this video may be too long. So, okay, we'll see. So when I achieve two thousand dollars a month cash flow from my assets, then I'll be wealthy. So according to him, uh, you consider the wealthy if what you generate is equivalent to or more than your expenses a month, like the, the cash flow. Okay, so by the way, it's about to end. I thought it was gonna be too long. Maybe I can finish. So I can finish and not uh, and make my point at the end. So while I'm not yet rich, that when you have uh, two thousand and two thousand, like it's all finished, just covering your expenses, I am wealthy. 
I now have income generated from assets each month that's fully cover my monthly expenses. That's what I want to explain. If I want to increase my expenses, I first must increase my cash flow to maintain this level of wealth. Also, note that if that it is at this point that I'm no longer dependent on my wages. I have focused on and been successful in building an asset column that has made me financially independent. If I quit my job today, I would be able to cover my monthly expenses with the cash flow from my assets. My next goal would be to have the asset cash flow, the excess cash, cash from my assets be invested into the asset column. The more money that goes into my asset column, the more my asset column grows. The more my assets grow, the more my cash flow grows. And as long as I keep my expenses less than the cash flow from these assets, I grow richer with more and more income from sources other than my physical labor. It's about to end, and I have to explain that point a little bit. As this invest the investment process continues, I'm well on my way to becoming rich. Just remember this simple observation. The rich buy assets, the poor only have expenses, and the middle class by liabilities they think are assets. I'm going to repeat that because it's in, you put it in, uh, in bold. What you need to remember. The rich buy assets. The poor only have expenses. The middle class buy liabilities they think are assets. I think that's where the biggest lesson is. Because remember we learned that your home, your car, you cannot call them assets, they're liabilities because they take money out of your pocket. So, uh, okay, that's the end of this one. There's a summary. I think I'll cover the summary in the next, before we start the next lesson in video 25. But this is the end of the reading. He has a note. You know, he always puts a note in, in here, in the blog, blog. Let me read it to you. This is a note he has. He's talking about pension plans. For those of you with pension plans, since Enron, that was an American story, it has become clear that pension plans are in trouble. Even government pension plans, such as those in Greece, Italy, and California, cannot pay out what is, is owed to retirees. So a retirement plan is no longer the guarantee it once was. It once was of security for old age and retirement. When the stock market crashed in 2019, anyone about to retire was in, in trouble, even if they had saved in their 401k, RRSF, SP, RRSP, or super annuation. So he's trying to say that, please don't think of retirement plans, all that as a pension plans as your way of surviving. Like when you're older, you have to be investing your own money and creating your own assets and cash flow. So that's the end of the reading, the end of this lesson, but I have the end of this video of reading, but I have to, and the end of lesson two, by the way, except we're going to have a summary. In the next video, I'll start with the summary like I did before, before we start the new lesson. And the new lesson will be mind your own business. I wanted to say something about what he was explaining here about the assets. So if your goal is to be become rich, in fact, I'm learning today that you have to be wealthy comes first. Wealthy means you can you have assets. For example, I like to give the example of rental property because it's easier. If you have you have a house or your properties you rent out and you're getting out uh, like $2,000 a month and your expenses are also $2,000 a month, now we are not talking about your salary or the job you're doing. We are talking about assets financing your expenses. So if you collected $2,000 rent and I'm assuming you've covered all the expenses on the house, you have a net cash flow of 2000 and your personal expenses, living expenses are 2000 That means you are wealthy, according to him. It's enough. 
you can survive with, even if you didn't have a job. And then he's saying, as you get more, more, we create more assets. At some point, you make sure the expenses, you don't increase the expenses, you keep them like maybe at 2,000 or a little bit more, but don't go too much over so that it gets to a point where what you're collecting is enough to cover your expenses, but it's also you have some left to invest. You see how you're depending on, on, on the money that you are, your assets are generating. But now, assuming you're still working, also you have a job, then you are at an advantage because you're using all that money to reinvest, create more assets. So that the ending, I think I mentioned this in uh, the beginning of some video, uh, the, the video where I mentioned it, that the goal, when I first learned about Robert Kiyosaki, he was teaching us that the cash flow from your assets should be enough to cover your expenses. And if this is continuous, that means you don't have to worry whether you have a job or you don't. That doesn't mean stop working, but you don't have to worry. You know you have the cash flow to take care of you in case of in case you lose a job or something like that. I mentioned, I said I want to explain the new schedule. I decided by watching who's watching, specifically who's watching the videos on the books. You know, here I do a lot of stuff. I do YouTube tips. I know those are different people who watch my YouTube tips. The business tips, earning money online, those, that's a different category. Then motivation is normally for everyone. And then I have these books. I notice the people watching them tend to be more international and their time is really, the time when I was uploading, 1 p.m. US Eastern time was really late. So I'm considering you, my viewers, and I moved the time to two hours earlier. So starting this video, in fact, the video before, although in there I had not made the decision, I had already recorded it, I'm bringing these videos at 11 a.m. USA Eastern Time. If you can check Google, please, it's two hours earlier than I was doing. And then I'm moving the YouTube tips and the motivation to come after. So every day we have books at 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time, except on Friday. The same time I'll be coming live. Please join me. And also I, uh, I appreciate you if you come when these videos are premiering. I always premiere them every day. If you come on while it's premiering, it helps uh, the, the channel. It helps the video and the channel. Please try to do that. Don't watch later. Come, try to come when you're available. When I'm premiering those videos, mark your calendars, 11 a.m. USA Eastern Time, your equivalent. And then that's how you're going to support this message. Remember, I promised to give you my password to enjoy this for free. So support these videos and you're going to benefit from that. And then I'll continue recording them too. The other thing was, uh, yes, I didn't explain that 11.30, 11 is books, but 11.30 on Thursdays, I do YouTube tips or business tips. Then on Sunday, 11.30, that means after the book, next, um, I have another video on, on Thursdays and on Sundays only. Sunday will be motivation. That's when I do motivation on Sunday. Something to do with personal development, motivation, like that. For those who want to have this one, free for one month, just listen. Go to, I have a link. In fact, I put them together this time to make it convenient. In the pinned comment, there is, a, there is two links. One takes you to my website, honestsoul.com, but there is a page for Amazon, Audible. So you go, you click, you see podcasts, and I, I think it's Audible podcast. When you click on that, it will take you to Amazon, and you make sure, if you want this book, the other books you can find in Audible Plus, but Audible Premium Plus is how you get this one. You, you, you select Audium or Plus and then search for Digital Poor Dad. They give you a credit and you can have the book free for a whole month. If you want to buy a physical copy still on this link, honestsoul.com, the link that I have in the description or also in the pinned comment, will take you to my page. You'll see this image of the book. You click on it, you can go buy it, but that's not free, you have to buy. And I promised, if you are new here, when we get to 5-0, if the people consistently come to watch these videos every day, I'm going to give you my password. So you don't need the account. I'll, I'll share 
I'll figure out a way to put it in a group somewhere. Then you can go watch for free. Uh, all those books, I'll pay for it. So please support these messages, share them. And I think that's it. Um, put a comment. What do you think about the time change? Is it helping or what? But I think I'm, I'm going to keep it there. I keep it at 11 because people watching here from all different countries. So I had to figure out a balance. Otherwise, I could have gone even lower in the, or, or ahead in the hours. I mean, from 11, it could have been 9 or 10. But I noticed there are people who are still working at that time. And even here, it's still very early. So we kept it. I kept it there at 11. Let's see how it goes. Hopefully it helps. Leave a comment, please. Leave a comment about the lessons we are learning. These are very, very important lessons. And I don't know how I can make it more clearer so that you understand. Come live. When you come live, you can ask me anything about these lessons we are learning from here. OK? Like I end them. I always end them. Take very good care of yourself. Take very good care of your families. Take very good care of your health. Uh, please don't always like before you leave a comment. Remember to like the video before you add a comment or dislike, whatever I choose. Uh, but leave something on top before you leave a comment. Take a step to a better you. Bye bye.